Welcome to Fusion Evolution, and we're going to start with just gentle hip tick tocking left to right. Pushing our feet into the ground, moving the hips left to right. And then add a little softness through the knees, add a little hip dip through center. Soften those knees, let the ankles feel free to move. Just left to right, five, four, three, two, and hip circles around and around. Focusing on this center part where the gravity kind of has its center. Now reverse direction, go the other way. Circling around and around. And four, three, two, and bring it in. Step it a little wider. We're gonna drop down low and just going side to side with a little toe tap. So we're starting to activate through the glutes and the quads, working a little bit around our knee, but keeping things stable and low impact. You don't even have to lift up the toes if that's causing a problem. Add a little swinging of the arms. Enjoy the vibes, enjoy the tunes. Three, two, and strengthen those legs. Push all the way up. Bigger hip circles. Move the hips all the way to the right. Scoop them around and up through the left. Back through the left and around through the right. Circle around and back to the front and around. So as we're doing these hip circles, well, half circles, we're getting a bit of a stretch in our hamstrings. Two more. And last one. Circle back and come through center. Bring the feet together. We're gonna start shaking things out a little. Just a little loose. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And five, four, three, two. Get the knees wobbling. Just nice little wobble through the knees, left to right. Five, four, three, two. Now right foot stays. Tap the left foot in and then point the toes to tap out. Bring it center and out. Tapping it in and out. Allow the hips to Kind of open up to the side, external rotation, four, three, two, step, switch. Toes forward and in, and then out to the side, bring it in. Allow the hips to feel the rotation. Allow the ribs to add a little extra movement. And five, four, three, Two, now left foot steps to the side and back. Tap it forward and extend through the tops of the feet and the toes. Bring it back. Tap, bring it back. Now the lower you go, the harder you're going to work. The goal here is to find a nice steady rhythm. Four, three, two, and one. Toes forward before we switch sides. Give me a little hip wiggle. Have a little fun. Get silly. Get dorky. Get weird and wacky. And now shift to the left. Right toes out. Extend all the way through the top of the foot and then tap it behind and extend back. So it's a little bit of a curtsy squat. Extend and back or curtsy lunge depending on who you're talking to and the lower you go the harder you're going to work you can just move the leg or if you notice I'm using my whole body to shift there's options four three two and one step it out Heels in, toes out, having your hips, uh, sorry, your heels <laughs> wider than your hips. Straight leg tick tock. And five, four, three, two. Now toes forward. We're going to 
rock forward and back, but up and down. Lifting up those heels, lifting up the toes. Five, four, three, two, and heels in, toes out, but still having your heels slightly wider than the hips. We're gonna press into the balls of the feet, lift up into the heels, lift up into the calves, little pulse at the top. Just a little pulse. And five, four, three, two, and really soften into those knees. A little plie squat like dips, but add a little dance going left and right. Notice where your knees say, okay, that's as far as I can go. Listen, but dance with it. And five, four, three, two, now the slightly harder version, heels in, toes out, classical ballerina style. We're gonna dip it down. <sighs> Using exhales, squeezing up and down. We're gonna turn this into a little bit more of a bounce and adding this little left to right. Finding that wobble, finding that lean, the drunken plies, if you will. <laughs> And five, four, my arms are just doing this to make sure I don't fall over, two, I somewhere missed three, bring it back to one. Toes in, heels out, wobble the knees, left to right. Left and right, five, four, three, two, and tap it back. Nice and long, staying tall through the spine. Tap it back, tap it back. Turn this into a little low side kick. And just fling the feet, side kick with a fling of the feet. Just a little kick. Turn this into little front kicks. And it's really just a little kick. You can do whatever you want with the arms. Have a little fun. If you want to go a little bit more diagonal, that's fine too. But still keep it low. We're adding more oomph with each movement as we go along. Five, four, three, two, and we're gonna go for some side bends, working our way up the body. Just hands to your thighs, having your feet around hip distance apart. Inhale and exhale it up. Inhale to the left and squeeze up. And right and go as low as your body lets you. We're only doing a few more of these because we're gonna work our core, our ribs, our spine a little differently. One of my favorite songs. Last one to the right, last one to the left. Let's go ahead for a little shoulder shrug. So a shoulder shrug, and add a little turn, little twist. And now that we're ready, shake it the girls. Uh, shake it, shake it out. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Get silly, get dorky. Don't worry about how you look, I'm not. <laughs> now we lock and load. Arms stay straight, legs together, and we wiggle, twist, lock and load, lock and load, lock and load. Straight arms, but don't hike up those shoulders. Keep those shoulder blades pushing down while the crown of your head is pulling up tall. Wiggle, twist, wiggle, twist. And now we turn this into twists, going left to right. Shift your weight, add some layers going down, or just leaning. You can add really big leg swings, or keep it small. Explore the options, get wild with the arms, or don't. 
but we're gonna take this twist and turn it into floppy elbows legs. And see if we can walk with this. Can you walk or not? Oh, well, that is the question of the day. Five, four, three, two, bring it back in, lock and load, this time elbows wide and elbows at shoulder height. Wiggle twist, wiggle twist. Staying tall. In five, four, three, two, one more thing, working everything, heels in, toes out. Shake your booty left to right and drop it into the knees. Add elbows, so now the top elbow, the right elbow is gonna meet the hip as the hip comes up and then left to left. You can go fast or find a steady rhythm, but we're never coming up to the top, we're staying low. Just a little longer, and then we're gonna go for our, um, let's go for our weighted balls, our weighted hand for our hand weights. Four, three, two, and rise up, toes forward. One more tick-tock of the hips, make sure you don't fall over like I almost did. Five, four, three, two, and grab your hand weights. I'm using two pound um, Pilates balls, they're filled with sand, but small dumbbells will work. Even cans of soup can add a little resistance. So now, just shoulder shrug. Little shoulder shrug bounce. Add a little lean. Five. Whoop. Four. Three. Two. And bring it in. Palms up. Bicep curl but we add layers just halfway. Now, when you come halfway, pull the elbows slightly back before releasing. Let your chest pull through, but don't arch your back. Stay with me a little longer. Five, four, three, Two, and now bring the hands in front. If you've got these types of balls, you can bash them. If you've got dumbbells, please don't bash them because your fingers might get caught in the middle. We're leaning forward just a little bit so we've got space to swing our arms, but it's not a bend and it's definitely not an arch. And we're gonna come low in front, bring the hands slightly in front so they have to work, and then out to the side. <sighs> Using the exhale to bring your wrists up to shoulder height. really focusing on the space between the shoulder blades, adding that little lift. And again, if you've got these balls, you can bash away. Get a little bit of stress. Nice and steady. The exhale on exertion gives us sometimes a little extra oomph and it brings our core more into awareness. Five, four, three, two, one, lengthen back into the spine, but we're gonna keep the arms moving down in front, circle all the way up and over, and down. Reach and drop. <sighs> Exhale it up where the exertion happens, or the other way. Don't worry about if the breath isn't lining up exactly the way you want it to. Just find a way to keep moving with your breath. <sighs> Five. Four, three, two, and last one, release. Now bring the hands forward, shoulder height, don't lean into it, keep shoulders over the hips, and we're gonna pull the right elbow back. 
we're letting our ribs turn, but not our whole hips. So it says, punch it back, keeping the hips pointed forward. Not sure about you guys, but uh, my shoulders are warm. Where we reach and punch back. Now don't pull the arm down, keep the elbow pulling back at a round shoulder height. Four, three, almost there, stay with me too. Last to the left, last to the right, good news. Bring it down, shake out the shoulders. Palms up, tuck those elbows in. If you've got something where you can loosen the grip to focus more on the upper part of the arm versus the forearm gripping, that would be fantastic. Elbows stay in, we squeeze to the side, keeping our wrist around elbow height. And five, four, three, two, and now keep those elbows wide, keep the hands out to the side, bicep curl it up and down here. Now the trick here is not to like lean and do this weird archy back thingy, just palms up and down. Sometimes a good song will come on and give us that little extra oomph that we need just when we're ready to quit or take a break. The song, the music can reinvigorate us. Four, three, two, and release. We're gonna take the balls down to the side and this is where we're gonna use our loop band. Whoop. <laughs> I mean, use our loop band, don't throw it, bring it around the ankles. Don't place it on the actual ankle bones, bring it slightly above. And right now, it's just a little lean and tap. Lean and tap. Just a little lean and tap. Now, the more uh, you keep your feet wide, the harder it's going to be as you go along. You can narrow the stance and not work as hard, but you decide how hard you work today. Now we're gonna turn this lean and tap into a step back. Just a simple step back. Keeping my chest slightly forward so that I don't arch into my back. I don't wanna turn this into a back bend. Just a little step back. You can shorten the stance and if you don't have resistance bands like this, you can do the same movement, just without the band. The band's just making us work a little harder. Five, four, three, two, and one. Now this is where it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. Our right foot stays, our left leg is the only one moving. It's gonna go forward, side, back, center. Forward, side, back, center. Forward, side, back, center. Front, side, back, center. Front, side, back. So it's actually four steps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Front, side, back. Good news. Last one. Front, side, back, center. Switch your weight into the left foot. Right leg does the same. Front, side, back, center. Four steps. Front, side, back. And you can make it slow. You can make it small. Or speed it up and really go for it. Front, side, back. Don't forget that center step, that fourth step. Front, side, back, center. Front, side, back. Whew, I'm a broken record. <laughs> Five, four, three, two. Stay with me. Last one. Bring it in. Oh, I don't know about you, but my bum cheek's on fire. We're going to step on the band. So we're bringing the band around the middle part of our foot. We're going to march, just bringing the feet up. It's 
still feeling this in my butt cheeks. Mama. Ooh. <laughs> now shift your weight to the right. Bring the left foot up and over. And it's just a little pull up. Using those hip flexors, using the core. Activate that knee to pull up. Hands can do whatever they need to for balance. And five, four, three, two, step. Good news, we've got two legs, so this is the last side. We pull up the right foot above the right uh, left knee, and we pulse up. Exhale, pull that knee up. Nice steady pulse. If you're using a band, you decide how hard you work by pulling up even higher or not. Five, four, three, two, and release. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that was intense. So the last tool that we're gonna use before we keep switching things it out is our smaller mini ball. Um, mine's not super inflated, so uh, I have to be mindful of what I'm able to do today. So right now, we're gonna start with bringing the ball to our side hip, drop the shoulders down, and we pulse the arm in. So this is an activation through the pectoral muscle and really pay attention to what's happening in your armpits. I know it sounds silly, but pay attention to what's happening underneath. Because it's not a pushing in of the elbow, it's straight arm. Now I want you to see how fast you can go and pulse. Pulse, 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 pulse. <laughs> and extend the fingertips so you're not gripping the ball. <laughs> Using the breath any way you can to create stability, awareness, and engagement of the core. Five, four, three, two, and release. Switch sides. So shoulder blade down, extend the fingertips. Steady rhythm, pulse it in. Feet can be about hip distance apart, give or take. Nice steady rhythm, squeeze it in. Five, four, three, two, and now let's go as fast as we can. Pay attention to the pectorals, AKA back underneath the armpits as well. Activate everything, pulling it together. Keep pulsing, pulsing, go as fast as you can, fast as you can. <laughs> Find a breath that works for you. Do not hyperventilate. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, and release. Now take it in front, fingertips are extended. Pull the shoulder blades back and reach them forward. Pull back and forward. So we're not bending the arms and we're not flaring the elbows. It's front and back. Focusing on the space between the shoulder blades. Five, four, three, two, and stay nice and neutral. And we're gonna take the hands and the arms and we're gonna rotate like we're driving a crazy car. Well, no, the car is not crazy. We might be crazy drivers. Just a nice rotation. Just a nice movement. And see if you can get far enough to touch the forearms without having a palm come away from the ball or if you're using a fitness circle. Five, four, Three, two, and let's bring it in. Whew. We're gonna make our way to the ground. So now that we're on the ground, we're gonna use this same device between our ankles. I'm just gonna make sure I don't hit my head on a dumbbell or a weight. Bring the uh, device, either the ball or the fitness circle between the ankles. If you're using a fitness circle, don't put it on your actual ankle bones. That doesn't feel very good. Heels up to the sky, and just a steady squeeze in. So I'm gonna just show you this angle. It's a squeeze in of the feet towards each other. I'm making sure my ribs are connected to the mat. I'm making sure they feel stable. If you're struggling with hamstrings, you can bend the knees, but don't bring the knees higher than the hips. Exhale, squeezing it in. Now I want you to go ahead and pulse. 
Pulse as fast as you can, squeezing those thighs inwards towards each other, pulsing, focusing on keeping the legs straight. Don't bet, let those knees bend. And five, four, three, two, and take that ball or your fitness circle into your hands. Reach the ball or the circle up overhead. Take the legs long. Exhale, back up. So we don't transfer the ball or the circle. We just do this long extension. Inhale, legs and arms overhead. If you need to bend the knees, this is an option. Just don't keep the knees higher than the hips. Hug those ribs in. Think of a corset hugging in tight so that we don't flare the ribs out. Four, three, two, and one. Bend those knees. Keep the circle or the ball in your hands. We're going to go for a little bit of a crunch and we're going to take turns. Hands squeeze in. So squeeze either the ball or the fitness circle as hard as you can. Don't lose that squeeze. Now exhale. Bring the hands to the outside of the right knee and back through center. Exhale. Up and to the left. Don't swing the arms up overhead. Keep squeezing that ball. Now, if you're struggling with this, if this bothers your neck, just a little rotation, just a little movement. You don't have to reach all the way up and down. Work with your range of motion. But don't forget to squeeze that ball or that circle between your hands. Exhale to the side. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Now we release. Take that ball off to the side. We're going to do something without any equipment. And there's some options for this one. I'm going to focus on using my lower body versus my upper body. But if you're struggling, you can do both ways. So how I'm going to use my lower body. My legs are going to come up and I can either keep knees bent or take them straight. But my legs are up to the side like the letter V. And I'm going to exhale and lift my tailbone up and release. I can add a little bit of a swing as long as it's controlled. Now where you can add a little extra upper body is if you lift up, doing a, basically a crunch and lifting up your bum cheeks. I struggle with that one, but that is my story. So explore range of motion. Some people will do this with their hands together, point their hands between their legs, past the knees. You can use your hands and rest your head on them or down at your side. Use exhale to squeeze up and down. Five, four, three, two, and release. Bend the knees. So now we're going to bring our elbows out to the side, fingertips to our head. We're going to always have one elbow touching the ground. On the exhale, I'm going to lift my left elbow up. And I'm going to bring it across just a little over towards the right, but my right elbow stays down. Inhale back, exhale, switch. So it's not a high lift. It's more of a diagonal lift. Using exhales. Four. Three, two, and release. Ooh, let's give our abs a tiny little bit of break. We want to focus on some glute action. This is where if you have that ball, it comes in handy, or even the small um, hand balls, something to squeeze between your knees. Even grab a couch cushion. Those work great. Um, or stuffed toys, but a dog's squeaky toy might drive you crazy. <laughs> Heels close to your bum. Placing the ball or anything that you can squish between your knees for extra oomph. It's not required. Exhale, lift up the hips just enough. 
that you're off the ground, but you're not lifting so high that you're bending or getting your chest into your face, and you're not arching your lower back. And we're just gonna squeeze the knees together. I'm keeping my arms up overhead because I wanna stay really aware of what's happening in my ribs to hold my body stable, but you could bring your hands down or reach up or reach all the way up and over. And we're just steady rhythm, squeezing the ball in. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Now, if you wanna add more layers, <laughs> lift up the toes, focusing on the heel and the ball of the feet, the balls of the feet. Activating those inner thighs and the glutes. And five. Four, three, two, and slowly curl down one vertebrae at a time. Let's take that ball out. We're actually gonna come onto a seated position and taking the legs up to the side. We can use our weights for this one, but we are slowing it down a little bit. So with this slow down, we're still gonna utilize the Pilates classical saw with or without the weights, your choice. So start off with a smaller version where we hug those elbows in and, and we twist towards the left and reach with the right arm. And now your left arm tucks in. It's this internal rotation of the shoulder blade. So it's just a turn and reach. You're not even trying to touch your toes. Inhale and exhale. Now. Let's go for a bigger reach, but don't bend in. Reach forward, bring it back. Inhale, exhale. If you wanna take it lower, you can, just don't speed it up. Inhale and exhale. One more each side. And last one. Take the balls or the weights off to the side. Bring your heels together, knees wide. Uh, yoga, we call it the cobbler's pose or butterfly pose, bhattakonasan. Allow the knees to bounce a little. Just shake it out and don't worry about forcing down. And then my favorite, the butt massage, rock side to side on your butt cheeks. And from here, we're going to rock all the way to the right and bring our left leg around behind us. So, see if you can adjust body parts so that you can get both hips as close to the ground as possible. And just rock forward and back. Just a little forward and back rock. And then forward fold onto your forearms if you can, otherwise onto your hands. Maybe you can come a little lower. And relax your head, relax your jaw, relax your neck. And with each exhale, breathe into the places of tension, inviting them to chill out, to relax, to release, to let go. And slowly come back up. And we're gonna take that left leg and we're gonna bring it behind us, what's called pigeon pose. So it's just a little shift I'm going to show a different angle here. Trying to get as low as you can through the hips. And again, you've got options. You can come up tall. You can come onto your forearms.
and then stay on your forearms if you can. If not, come up onto your hands. We're gonna pull that right leg through and back. Tuck the back toes, lift up. Coming into a brief plank. And then drop the knees, lift up the toes. Staying in this plank position for just a couple of breaths. Push the floor away. Come onto your forearms. So we, even though we're into the stretching, we're gonna keep our muscles activated, focusing on our core, focusing on stability. You can even come up into a full plank if you wish. Just don't stick your hips up too high. I'm adding a little wiggle left to right because it feels good. Four, three, two, and then drop those knees. Come up onto your hands. Staying in this plank a little longer. Don't drop the hips and don't stick the bum back. Stay in the plank. Tuck those toes, lift up and bring the left leg through, coming into our pigeon. Pigeon pose, ikapada, kapottanasana, that's some of the yogi talk coming out. And again, in this pose, you've got options. You can lift up, you can lean into a back bend, you can get onto your forearms. I like to rock them to, in, into all these poses. I'm not a, a huge fan of getting into one pose and like holding it. Um, I find my nervous system does not enjoy that. I prefer to find the flow. This is more about prana flow, vinyasa flow, but really it's about supporting what my nervous system needs. So maybe your nervous system really likes just getting into a pose and like, <sighs> mine likes to flow, mine likes to dance. Bring your hands up and you're shifting your weight onto the left bum cheek and just slide that left knee in towards the left foot. So we are in this mermaid pose. First rock a little forward and back. Get adjusted into this position in this side, this leg. And then come forward, fold down, either with your hands or on your forearms. Relax your neck, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. Nodding your head yes, shaking it a little no. And then wherever you are, walk your hands back up and then walk towards the left knee and then just drop onto your elbow and come onto your back. Start off with just swaying the knees left to right, a little windshield wiper action here. Just a nice little sway. Okay. Noticing what's happening in your back. And now bring the legs up through the center. Now this is gonna be a stretch and still keeping the core active. So the knees come up, but don't bring them higher than the hips. Keep them at hip height. Hands come out to the side, palms down. Now slowly let your hips rock, pick a side, and slowly, slowly let the knees, both knees, come all the way down or as close as you can to the ground. If you need to do this supporting, keep your feet down on the ground. There's always an option. And the goal is to get the knees down while keeping your shoulder blades connected to the ground, both of them, that is. Sometimes I like using my bottom hand to hold the leg down, just to give myself this extra resistance to deepen into the twisted stretch. If this does not feel good, don't do it. And sometimes we get into these deep twists and it can feel really constrictive on our breath. 
don't let it create any tension. Relax your jaw and notice that you have so much space in the back of your ribs, the back of your lungs, along your spine to breathe in. Gently release the hand if you're reusing it. Now this is where the abdominals take over again. On the exhale, slowly bring those legs back up. And I said slowly, don't just whip them up. Come back through center. Pause just a moment. Get your hips realigned if you need to. There's a wiggle happening. Now let both knees slowly come to the opposite side. Keep those shoulder blades down. Notice where the knees get lower and lower. There's more action required to keep the shoulder blades down. Woo. Sometimes we kind of fall at the end. I'm going to use my hand again to support my twist. Both of my shoulder blades are down. Relax your jaw. Soften the space between your eyebrows. And now slowly, using the exhale again, come up nice and slowly. Nice and slow, come all the way up. Give your knees a little hug. Rock a little side to side. And then gently take the knees out to the side. Reach up, slide your hands towards your feet. I am a huge fan of happy baby pose because it does so much and it kind of makes me feel silly and goofy and dorky, so that's always a good feeling. Keeping your hip bones pressing down. Don't lift your bum cheeks up if possible. It's not about doing the splits. Keeping those knees bent. Pull the shoulder blades down and back. I do like to rock though. Feels good on my spine and my back. And when I say spine, I mean the actual spine and my back, I mean the back muscles. All the different tissues, tendons. Feels good. Just don't get too enthusiastic because sometimes rolling over, falling over takes, pl uh, takes place. <laughs> and then release the feet in and all the way down. Now you take a few moments and either rest breathe or ask your body if there's anything else it would like. Maybe it's a hamstring stretch. Maybe it's just taking the legs up, reaching for those toes. Maybe it's one leg at a time. Maybe it's hugging in, finding that, you know, we're under um, reverse pigeon pose. I know my hamstrings are tight, so I'm encouraging a little extra movement. But whatever movement you choose, try to make sure that both sides get equal time. Wherever you are, hug the knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little hug. Or rock side to side. And then slowly reach up one arm, preferably the one facing the camera because you're going to roll towards that lengthened arm and you're going to come pressing up back into seated. Find a comfortable position, whether it's cross-legged or not, and just let your head drop to the right, relaxing the shoulders down. And then we switch, let your head drop down towards the left. And then come through center, inhale, circle the arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, hands to your heart. Just a moment of pause and appreciation and acknowledging the work that your body just did and take a deep breath, exhale with a big sigh. And when I say big sigh, I mean it. Take a deep breath in. 
Thank you for joining me.